Hi there guys, my name is Matt and today we're going to be looking at a really important topic in GCSE maths that's going to be taken forward in your further maths study, so be that in A level or be that even at university, and that's going to be expanding and simplifying brackets. All right, so first of all, we're going to look at some core knowledge that you need to actually undertake the problems firsthand. Okay, so let's look at this first one. What do we have? So we have an A term outside of three terms within a bracket. Okay, so that's a B term, a C term, and a D term. So how are we going to undertake this? All right, so looking at this problem specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to first of all multiply this A term by the first term, the B term. Okay, then after that, similarly, we're going to multiply the A term by the C term. And so what do you think we're going to do last? Yeah, that's right. We're going to multiply the A term by the final D term. Okay, so what are these individual multiplications going to be? So we first of all, if we have A multiplied by B, that's going to give us A, B. Okay, next we're going to have A multiplied by C. So what's that going to give us? It's going to give us A, C. And then finally, A multiplied by D, that's going to give us A, D. See? Simple, right? Okay, so the next bit of fundamental knowledge that you need to take into these questions is collecting like terms. Okay, so if we have a little look at this second question here, this second expression, what do we have? So we have 6x plus 2a minus 2x plus 7a. So what you might notice here is that there's actually two different types of terms. We have x terms, but we also have a terms. And so the like terms are the ones that have the same letter. Okay, so the like terms in this one are the x terms and the a terms separately. So in order to collect them, we need to add the numbers in front of the letters, okay? So, if we look at the x terms to start with, we'll have 6x minus 2x. So if we're gonna add the numbers in front of the letters, that will give us six minus two, which will give us four x. And then if we look at the a terms, we have a two a and a plus seven a. What's that going to give us? Yeah, that's right, a 9a. Right, so these are the topics, or these are the sort of the concepts as such that we're going to need to take forward going into the questions that we are going to undertake. All right, okay, so moving on now, we're going to have a look at these examples, okay? Right, so first of all, just have a look through the questions see what's going on. If we're going to look at question number one, we have a two outside of an x minus three within the bracket. Okay, so remembering what we did with the a, b, and c, and d before, if we have the two, first of all, we're going to multiply that by the x. And then after that, we're going to multiply it by the second term inside the bracket, the minus three. Okay, so two multiplied by x, that will give us two x and then the two careful here because there's a negative in front of the three so we're gonna have to take that through it's gonna be two multiplied by negative three will give us negative six right okay so this second question is a bit more complicated because we've actually got an x squared term but again we're going to be applying the same logic just multiplying through one term at a time Okay, so if we have a four on the outside, again, careful, we've got a negative here. Four times negative x squared will give us negative four x squared. Right, okay, so now what we've also got to do with this two x one is we've got to multiply the four by the two. Remember the numbers in front of the letters. Okay, so four, multiplied by positive 2x is going to give us positive 8x. Oh, 
make that a bit clearer. Sorry, just starting out with this whiteboard. Okay, and finally, we have a four multiplied, again, be careful here, with the negative six, okay? So remembering the times tables, it's gonna be a negative 24. Okay, right, so moving on to this third question here. So this one might look a bit confusing because it's actually got different letters, but remembering what we did originally with the A, B, C's and D's, it doesn't actually matter what the letters are. It could be X's, could be Y's, could be A's, could be C's, B's, could be C's. It doesn't actually matter. The same logic still applies, okay? So it doesn't matter if it's A squared, X squared, the same logic applies. But also what we have to be careful with here is that we have a negative in front of the three. So that's gonna have to carry through as well, okay? So again, going through each term slowly, we have a negative three multiplied by the first term, the a squared. So negative three multiplied by a squared is gonna give us negative three a squared. Right, so the next term is a positive five b. So we have a negative here, the negative three multiplied by positive. That's gonna give us a negative. So it's gonna be and remember three times five as well. So that's gonna give us a negative 15b. Okay, and finally, tricky one here, there's actually two negatives being multiplied by each other. So remembering what two negatives multiplied by each other will give us, it'll give us a positive. So negative three multiplied by negative c will give us a positive 3c. Okay, question number four here is slightly more difficult because we've got two brackets, okay? But remembering what we've done in these previous questions, we just have to do each bracket one at a time, okay? So first of all, we're gonna have a look at this first bracket and the number outside it. So we have a two outside of an x squared plus x minus five. Okay, so remembering exactly what we've done before. So the two multiplied by the x squared, gonna give us two x squared. Two multiplied by the x is gonna give us positive two x. And then the two multiplied by the negative five, so negative five, is gonna give us a negative 10. Right, so now we can tackle the second bracket. Again, be careful here because it's got a negative in front of the four. So negative four multiplied by three x squared is gonna give us, remembering four multiplied by three, is gonna give us a negative 12 x squared. So here I'm just doing it below the last one. Actually, you know what? just drag this over a little bit so it's clearer. So the negative four, again by the three x squared, will then give us negative 12 x squared. Okay, so the negative four now by the negative two x, remember before, two negatives make a positive, is gonna give us a positive eight x. And finally, a negative four multiplied by a positive four. So this is what you remember is four squared will give us negative 16. Perfect. Okay, so what we have to consider here is what we looked at before, which is collecting the like terms. Okay, so think about the different terms we've got here. We have x squared, x's, and then just normal integers. Okay, so if we collect the x squared, so we have a two x squared minus 12 x squared, so two minus 12 is gonna give us minus 10 x squared. Okay, then we have the x terms, so we have a positive two x and a positive eight x, two plus eight is gonna give us 10. So that's gonna give us positive 10 x. And then in terms of integers, 
you have a negative 10 and a negative 16. So negative 10 minus 16 is going to give us negative 26. Okay, so now moving on to the final question coming back over here. Right, so what we have to remember here is our bid mass. Okay, so if you remember that from previous topics or what we've done when you were younger, we always have to do the brackets term and what the brackets first and the numbers, what that's going to be multiplied by the brackets, they'll come first as well. Okay, so what we can just leave on one side as one term is this number six here. Okay, so we just keep that six on one side. What we need to be careful not to do is do the six minus three first because the three needs to multiply with the remainder of the bracket. Okay, that'd be really easy to get confused with, but just remember if it's attached to a bracket or if it's within the bracket, we got to do that first. Okay, so we have that six on the side there. And next, okay, so we've got the negative three, so be careful with that. And then we've got the three x squared, the two x, and the negative four. So we're going to go through that one term at a time. Okay, so the negative three first, so negative three multiplied by three x squared will give us minus nine x squared. And then the negative three multiplied by the two x is gonna give us negative six x. And then the negative three, again, multiplied by another negative, so it's gonna be positive, negative 3 multiplied by negative 4 is going to give us positive 12. Again, we have to look at this, collect our like terms, and what terms are the same here? So we've got one x squared term, one x term, but we've got two integers. We have 6 and positive 12. Okay, so we're going to collect them. So it's going to be 6 plus 12, and that's going to be 18. So bringing that all together now will be minus 9x squared minus 6x plus 18. Perfect. Okay, so that's how much teaching I'd normally do in a session. And what we'd go through next is I'd let the student do a few uh, problems themselves. So if they're still struggling with the concepts a bit, they'd maybe do the beginner one, which is quite similar to the previous examples. If they were getting confident, but they weren't entirely uh, confident in their ability, then they'd do the intermediate one. And if they were really comfortable with everything, they're finding it very easy, then they'd do the advanced one. And using that, then we go forward with the session and uh, finish there. All right. Well, thank you very much.